Today is a good day. 37 years for Pastor Blankenship. We praise God for that milestone. We want to say thank you, Pastor Blankenship, for your leadership, guidance, kindness, compassion, and most of all, your unwavering faith. May your pastoral anniversary be a time of reflection and gratitude for all that God has done through you. Please continue to allow the Lord to direct your path and to use you. We appreciate the impact that you have had in our lives and may the Lord Jesus Christ continue to bless you as you continue to answer the call that he has placed upon your life. The scripture says in Jeremiah 3:15. And I will give you pastors, according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. We also want to acknowledge Sister Blankenship, and we want to say happy birthday to her as well. You know, Pat, the Lord called Pastor Blankenship, but he can't do this by himself. So he had his wife and Emily, the family, to stand beside him. I think at this time, we ought to give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord for what he has done so far at NAC. And praise the Lord for all of the great things that he's going to continue to do at NAC. We're going to go to the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5 and verse 12. And the scripture says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. I want to read the same scripture from the Amplified Version, which says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to appreciate those who diligently work among you, recognize, acknowledge, and respect your leaders who are in charge over you in the Lord and who give you instructions. You may be seated. 37 years is a great and wonderful milestone. And we can look back and say, thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for Norfolk Apostolic Church and for all the great things, for all the souls that has been saved for the 37 years that Pastor Blankenship has been here. To God be the glory for all that he has done. But, saints of God, we, let me remind you, that is good. But we still have a long way to go. Because there are still many souls out there today that need to be saved. There are people today who are lost and need to be won into the kingdom of God, back into the ark of safety. May today, yes, be a day of celebration. At tonight's service, we're going to have a celebration. We're going to do all these great things. That's good. We take time out to do all those things. But let us not forget the souls that need to be saved. We must continue to labor for the lost souls that are dying in this world. Amen. Pastor Blankenship, that was his mission. He came here. He was called by God. And I even heard him say many times that he didn't expect to be here for 37 years. But God placed a calling on his life for such a time as this. It's not about what Pastor Blankenship wanted to do, but it's what about God wanted to use Pastor Blankenship to do at NAC. So you ask yourself the question, what about you and what about what God wants for you to do? Think about that whenever God calls you into a church, into a ministry, into a situation. It's not about what you want, but it's what God wants for you to do. But saints of God, we still have much work to do. Pastor Blankenship and us have a lot of work to do in the city of Norfolk, Hampton, Virginia Beach, and also in Cambodia, and also wherever else the Lord may want to plant a church. We have to be busy about the things that God has called for us to do. It's no time for slacking because the devil is busy working, working to deceive as many of us as he can. But we got to stand firm in the Lord. 
No of them that labor among you. Can God count on you? Can Pastor Blankenship and the staff of this church count on you? It was a couple months ago we had evangelist Jeremiah Gwendu. He came and he talked about the vision that God gave him. He said he saw the church building, and then he said he saw how the, um, the building was swallowed up, and then out came a brand new building. And then he said um, there was two parts to the vision. He said the building that we were going to receive is going to happen quickly. When you work for God, when you worship God, and when you praise God, God does not take long. God can do things instantly beyond what we can see or comprehend. We just got to trust him. We just got to trust him in all that we, we do. And then he says, there will be a dramatic shift in the people. God will lift us up to be a greater level of spiritual dominion and authority. We need to be ready to step into the promise that God has for us. The vision has been given. The vision has been given, so now we have to be prepared for all those lost souls that are going to be coming into NAC. We have to be prepared to disciple them so that they too can go out and win more lost souls. That is what it's about, is winning lost souls. The scripture says, he that winneth souls is wise. We have to win souls for the kingdom of God, and we have to pray and ask God, Lord, what must I do to win a soul for you? It goes on to say the purpose of the church, the purpose of the church, I don't know if you know this, but the purpose of the church is to prepare you and I to meet the Lord. The purpose of the church is to prepare you and I to meet the Lord. Okay? And the scripture says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. All the world has not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ yet. That's why Jesus Christ has not come back yet. But we cannot be slack. We cannot be slack because people need to hear this gospel. Will you to answer the call of Mark 16, 15 that says, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Until then, we have much work to do in preparation for the work that is to come. Amen. Amen.